Ratings for AEW Collision on Saturday night were down over 27% from the debut the week prior. The Forbidden Door Go Home show averaged 595,000 viewers on TNT, down eight from 816,000 the previous week, or about 27.1%. As Paul Fontaine noted in his post on the main page yesterday, the second episode of AEW Dynamite in October 2019 dropped a similar percentage. It dropped at a 27.8% uh, drop in the second week. Collision this week drew a 0.21 rating in the 18 to 49 demo, down 36.4% from the debut. Interestingly enough, that also compares with the 32.4% drop that Dynamite fell on its second week on TNT. So there you go, compare and contrast. In the demo, Collision ranked fifth on the cable charts on Saturday. It finished behind the College World Series, Gold Cup Soccer, and ESPN Sports Center. I am sure that there are going to be a lot of either ill-informed or disingenuous people that blame it on New Japan and that nobody wanted to see it. That is the first... Look, maybe that's the case. I look at that as one of the furthest things from the truth because, bottom line, there's going to be weeks that this show, for no rhyme or reason, probably hits a million viewers. There are going to be weeks after a million viewers that it hits... 402,000 viewers the next week. That's what's going to happen to this show. Again, uh, things, if the, if Gold Cup Soccer and the College World Series, which I guess was Florida and LSU, like if that's taking that big of a chunk out of them, you can imagine what college football is going to do. You can imagine when there's a an event of some repute on a network that that's not going to claw into this show. And you can load that show up with as many people as you want. The reality is pro wrestling, God bless it, unless it's a WrestleMania or unless it's a all in or a big event, people are probably, if it comes down to my favorite sports team playing right now live for this sport I have a passion for in pro wrestling, I know which one is probably, at least in my world and most of the people I know's world, I know which one is going to be watched later on on the DVR. And it's going to be collision and it's going to be pro wrestling in general. So again, if you're a lot younger than I am, maybe that's going to be different for you, but this is going to be a show that frankly is going to wildly vary every single week. So again, I'm not getting out in front of the New Japan stuff, but I know that there are, are AEW fans and there are people that just, they don't care about New Japan. They don't care about what the show means, actually, from a wrestling festival point of view and a fan's point of view. And frankly, as I mentioned, for some of those workers, you know, again, MJF can talk about New Japan being an indie and all that stuff, go through the whole shtick. He's still got Hiroshi Tanahashi on his resume, and he'll be able to look back, and it's like, you know, a guy that faced Luthez way after his prime, or Buddy Rogers and Ric Flair. You know, there's another great example. You know, all those years later, Rogers comes back, faces Ric Flair. It was great for Ric Flair. Was Rogers the same Rogers as 1960? Of course he wasn't. It was 1977, 78. I can't even remember what year it was now. 79, I guess it was. It, you know, so... Again, anything you hear about New Japan being the cause of this, I'm going to demand proof. The Monday Night Raw rating doesn't need any proof. WWE is just hot right now. 1.97 million viewers with a .61 rating in 18 to 49 and a .46 in 18 to 34. As noted on the main page yesterday, those numbers are usually re reserved for episodes of Raw after major premium live events, not before them. And we got Money in the Bank coming up this weekend, but Raw did a big number. They were second on cable behind that LSU Florida game in the College Baseball World Series, which did 3.43 million viewers and a .85 in 18 to 49. I didn't know the numbers were that good for college baseball, to be honest, but then again, it is the World Series. Raw was second to the game across the board in all key demos and fifth in total viewers on the night on cable, trailing the game and three new shows. It beat everything on network TV in 18 to 49 and its best number in the demo since Monday, since the Monday after WrestleMania. And just 
to ice the cake for them. The first to third hour drop was not anywhere near what it has been recently. The first hour averaged 2.07 million viewers, falling to 2.04 million for the second hour, and then to 1.8 million for the final hour. So they actually did a really good job there. What's the rhyme or reason to it? Probably just the lack of competition on Monday night. WWE also announced via Variety yesterday that they're making some changes to their broadcast team on Raw and SmackDown. Joseph Courier posted this up on the main page yesterday. Jackie Redman, who has been with WWE since 2021, will now serve as a backstage interviewer for Raw alongside Byron Saxton. Uh, with Redman joining Raw, that means Kathy Kelly moves over to SmackDown, where she'll work with Kyla, uh, Kayla Braxton as the backstage interviewer's Braxton and Redman will uh, be the co-host now for WWE pay-per-view pre-shows. Booker T and Peter Rosenberg will also continue to be part of those panels. Redman, as I mentioned, started with WWE in 2021 as a co-host for Raw Talk and Talking Smack. Variety notes she'll continue to do studio work for WWE as well as continue in her roles uh, as a broadcaster and a, a mic holder on the NHL Network and WBD Sports and going to continue in those roles the one who gets pushed out in this scenario megan morant who had been on smackdown will now host raw talk the smackdown lowdown international shows for television and digital shows that includes hosting wwe's twitch sidecast during raw so uh morant out of the picture for right now um nothing that, that she really did redmond's really good you know watching her during hockey and everything so Hopefully that, you know, she gets a great break there. Although I'll be honest, of almost all of them, and I'm a big fan of Kyla, Kyla Braxton, and especially how she she and Paul E just have this great Heen and Mean Gene type of relationship going on when they're on the microphone with each other. But, um, yeah, at some point, Vic Joseph, I can see being up on the main roster, and Mackenzie Mitchell, who he is married to, I think she may be the best one of the bunch. And looking forward to both of them actually coming up at some point. I like the Wade Barrett-Vic Joseph combination, and at some point, Michael Cole, I'm sure, wants to just step back and produce these guys. Maybe when Kevin Dunn goes, you know, that's a role that Michael Cole could, again, possibly take and, you know, or at least take some of the, you know, what, what Kevin Dunn does. Obviously, I don't know with the TV production work if Cole can do all that, but I would love to see Vic Joseph back on the main roster alongside Wade Barrett. L.A. Knight. He thought he was going to be fired, and he appeared on the uh, Chris Van Vliet show uh, ahead of this weekend's Money in the Bank, and Knight said he thought he was going to be fired by WWE in 2022 after his stint on the main roster as Max Dupree last May. Uh, we all thought he was going to be fired after that, to be honest with you, especially because Vince McMahon apparently didn't like how he read his lines, but silver lining and everything, Vince quit got fired uh, whatever it was and when that happened triple h brought a lot of people back that he liked and dropped la Knight's uh goopy max capri nickname and went back to the guy we got now playing beat i'm playing dj tonight Vinny, what are you wearing? I'm with the uh, shirt and vest combo, which was, was, in fact, a thing in the 90s. We got Craig here, who appears to have, uh, he's Craig Corrosion. Yeah. The ultimate warrior. Da, 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 da. I'm wearing an Everclear t-shirt, one of my favorite bands from um, that decade. Granny actually has a special shirt on today, Granny. Granny is in her 90s. Yeah, would you like, kitties. yeah, she's in her 90s. That's how she's celebrating She's the dressed 90s. in the 1890s? I got my kitties on. You got your what? Kitties. Oh, your kitties? Yeah, that's not what you thought you said, Brian. Yeah. Bye. All right. Get out of here, Granny. Gret 5. Happy 90s. I wish you wouldn't do that. What? They remind me all the time. No, we're doing a 90s, like the 1990s. We're doing a 90s party. Oh, okay. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure 4 Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.